So ideally, today I wanted to go ahead and put the SR20 transmission onto the 1UZ that is in the truck and build a transmission mount. But we don't have the adapter plate for the transmission yet, so we can't do that. Instead of just waiting around for that to show up, I decided let's be productive. We're gonna go ahead, pull the engine out yet again, Hopefully the last time, actually. That's, that's exciting. Today, when we pull this engine out, it should be the last time we pull the engine out before it runs. But yeah, we're gonna go ahead and pull out the engine, finish fabricating and reinforcing everything in the, the engine bay, the strut bar, the shock towers. And then in the next video, we can go ahead and paint it all, make it look nice, get the engine bay sparkling. Let's continue. Let's go ahead and pull the engine out and start fabricating. Well, really just reinforcing, actually, so that'll be fun. I got a cool new tool to make some dyes, some gussets, you'll see. Step one, strut bar. Now, I'd have to undo the motor mounts. I got some nice thick sheet metal and this tool right here. This guy right here is a punch and flare tool. You pretty much uh, use it on sheet metal to punch in those cool looking gussel dimple things that you see on roll cages a lot. And when you do that to sheet metal, it makes it significantly start stronger. So as you can tell, this side goes on one side, this side goes on the other. You tighten the bolt down and it punches a hole in the sheet metal and like bends it and makes it nice and strong looking. And it looks really cool too. So we're gonna be using this tool and some sheet metal to uh, kind of strengthen some of the stuff we've built, spread out the load and make it look really pretty. That's pretty much all I have to say. This thing was like 130 bucks, which kind of sucks, but let's try it. The strut tire, we're not gonna be able to fit the gussets down the, the middle like I wanted to. Problem is that there's only about two inches between the bottom of this and the intake manifold and the gusset when it's finished is like two and a half inches tall. So <laughs> that wouldn't work. Oh yeah, it would look a lot cooler with gussets up there, but oh well, let's move on. I'm gonna start by finishing the welds on the strut tower mounts. Yeah, I would say that looks uh, pretty crazy. I don't love the way this top part turned out, but I think it'll be better once the engine's in here. Um, worst case scenario, we can redo it. I don't know, it's hard to show on camera, but it just looks so crazy with all this, these shapes everywhere and these welds everywhere. Now it is time to reinforce the strut towers themselves. I did a little bit more welding on them, so they're 100% welded up. But we're gonna add another brace that connects the two uprights, and then we're gonna do a sheet metal plate that connects all of this with gussets in it. Another thing you have to keep in mind, one of the reasons why it looks kind of funky right now is because it's in a really crappy engine bay with rusty old gross stuff all over the place. So when everything is like brand new glossy, remember how good the RX-7 engine bay looked? Imagine that with all this, this fabrication in here, it's all gonna be gloss back, black, gloss black. It's 
gonna look awesome. All right, after another needlessly long drive, I got myself some metal. So first step is to cut out an inner brace with this flat stock here. Then we're gonna go ahead, add some gussets and a thing of sheet metal and cut it out to the shape of the main hoop uh, on the shock tower. Gotta say I'm pretty disappointed with that tool. The first one went really well, second one went decent. Third one went not so great, and that last one, um, well, the bolt stripped out before it got finished. The 12.9 bolt that came with the kit stripped out. So the Eastwood flare and die set, die and flare set, I don't recommend. It says it can do 16 gauge steel, it definitely can't. I followed all the instructions correctly, and uh, now it's broken, so I'm gonna be returning that. I wouldn't be angry if it was like a cheap tool, but that thing was like 130 bucks to get shipped here, that little piece of metal that broke after using it twice. I get pretty frustrated at things like this because now I just ruined that sheet of metal. I have to go get another sheet of metal, which takes me, you know, 40 minute round trip to the store. And then I have to go through the effort of returning that thing to get my money back. <sighs> if I spend that much money on a tool, it shouldn't break the second time I use it. Now we won't have any cool gussets on the suspension. We are still proceeding with the same idea, except we're just not using the uh, the flares, the gussets. So we're gonna go ahead, cut this out, and then weld it onto the main hoop to combine all the pieces into one. All right, after a little bit of cutting, we got the two plates, which are still warm. Now it is time to weld these in. Before we can weld these in, there are a couple of welds on the, uh, the main hoops of the shock tower that we wanna grind nice and flat. So these are nice and flush. I ended up leaving the shop a little bit earlier last night. It was just so freaking hot in here and I was so dehydrated. I just felt miserable and I was like about to pass out. So drink your water, kids. It doesn't taste good, but it's, you kinda need water to survive. But I did finish everything that I wanted to get done. The engine bay, all the suspension stuff, is now even stronger than it was before. It's, everything is done. I can now stand in this thing jump up and down as much as I possibly can. The suspension doesn't flex at all. There's no visible movement whatsoever. I know it's gonna be different when there's like a 400 pound engine and trans in there and when it's on the track with lots of grip and lots of load, but it is still really strong. Another thing you guys have to keep in mind is that these strut towers don't affect the alignment whatsoever. Camber, caster, toe, it's all set with the control arms and the steering rack. The only thing that the shock towers are doing is holding the truck up. So a little bit of flex, just a tiny, tiny bit, isn't a bad thing. It's not gonna affect the alignment whatsoever. But yeah, the engine bay is done. No more fabrication is necessary, as far as I can tell. Well, that's not true, I need to fabricate a, a trans mount, but that shouldn't take too long. And I need to build a radiator mount, but that also shouldn't take too long, and neither of those things will require much welding. Let me know what you guys think. I think I might have Mike rebuild one of these out of a stronger steel because it is just mild steel and even with these reinforcements it will probably flex a little bit with the engine and trans in there. Everything else is uh, is good though. I can't wait to see this engine bay looking nice. Hopefully by Monday I will have the engine bay painted, all cleaned up, and the video out to you guys. I've got something really, really cool I want to show you guys. A lot of you have been waiting patiently for this. 
pay to see what that is. Oh, hell yeah, boys. Drift truck air freshener. All of the Gin Gym air fresheners have arrived, so if you guys purchased a set of air fresheners, it'll be shipping out to you soon. If you haven't purchased a set of air fresheners yet, now is your chance to do so. There's only about 40 left. To anyone who has purchased a set or will purchase a set, thank you so much. It really, really does help support this build. Makes everything so much easier, so thank you guys. All right, here. Uh, 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 uh. Most of this stuff is pretty, pretty easy. Everything's going well. It's almost done. Uh, let me correct myself and say it's almost running because, you know, projects are never really done, right? But yeah, guys, I think that is going to be it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you for the support. Um, I know I've been not really complaining, but I've been uh, defending myself. I just want to say that I appreciate every one of you guys, all of your comments, positive or negative. 99% of you guys who are giving me negative comments are really just giving me some constructive criticism, which is what I ask for in every single video, so thank you. This channel and the gaming channel has been doing really well recently. It's got me in a really good mood, so just thank you. Excited to get this truck done and to get it ripping, travel the country. I know when the truck is finished, we wanna go down to Texas and visit Evan, but yeah, that's gonna be it. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Give it a like if you enjoyed, give it a dislike if you didn't enjoy. Go check out the gaming channel for some cool car content, gaming stuff related. It's not like I'm like playing Fortnite or something. I'm actually playing car stuff, so you guys will still like it. Hey. Although I do play Fortnite still a lot. But anyway, peace out guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.